This is TTSD Family Technology Night 101. We'll be having a 201 on Wednesday and a 301 once school starts. This one is going to be covering the basics of having devices at home. And I keep forgetting that we actually have live, live interpretation, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, next slide, please, Thor. Um, what we'll be covering this evening is um, the following topics. So as a student uh, registered at Tiger Tualatin School District, all of our kindergarten through 12th grade students will receive a device um, for learning. They, we began that years ago and finished all grades this last fall. So um, we'll talk about devices in, in the kids' hands. We'll talk about internet access. Um, student accounts every student in grade kindergarten through 12th grade also has a ttsd student account and that'll be key for them to get into um, the resources that'll be provided for them when school starts we'll talk a little bit about ipad tips and tricks and chromebook tips and tricks we'll talk a little bit about, about the ttsd web filter and um, where to go and get help whether that's today, in a week, or when school starts, or in six months from now, in the middle of the school year. Next slide, please. So, forgot to update this slide. Um, I, mean, I already mentioned myself, Susan Bernard, IT Director. We've got Gigi Escobar, who is a family partnership advocate. She is doing our interpretation for us. Martin Alvarez, who did the live interpretation for us, is also um, and actually, Gigi, I'm so sorry, you're not family partnership advocate. You are the culturally responsive liaison, as is Martine. Um, Jennifer Sapinski is our instructional technology or instructional coach with the school district. And we also have on the line a couple of family partnership advocates. We've got um, Vilma, and we might be having a couple others join us. So we've got a panel of folks here tonight to help answer questions that you may have. Um, next slide, please. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, we're going to do about 30 minutes or so of content about trying some things, and then we'll have about a half an hour of answering questions. And I'll invite the panelists to, to jump in at that point if we haven't heard from them um, up till that point. So iPads and Chromebooks at Tiger Tualatin School District, that is what our students use. Um, iPads are at elementary school and middle school, so from grades K through eight and Chromebooks are at our high schools. Um, all of our students that were here last year kept their devices over the summer, with the exception of those kiddos that moved from fifth to sixth grade or eighth to ninth grade. I believe today was the day that our incoming ninth graders at the high school picked up their Chromebooks at the high school. Tomorrow is the day that our incoming sixth graders will pick up their iPads at our middle schools. And our kindergartners will get their iPads in early September um, as the elementary school kindergarten teachers um, work out a, a way to, to bring them in or to at least connect with them so that they um, get some training on how to use that iPad. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, sorry, let me move some of these out of my way. Um, so again, if your child was with us last school year, one of the things that we really want to make sure that you have um, identified, located, and charged is that Chromebook or the iPad that was with your child over the summer. Hopefully they've been doing things like reading some digital books through Sora, um, but now would be the time to find that device, get it charged. Every student received an iPad and a charger and block or a Chromebook and a charger. So um, we'll want to track those down and, and find a new spot in the home. If you haven't already, charge it on the kitchen counter, um, just so you have a place where every night that gets charged so that it's ready for the next day. All right, next slide, please. Internet access. Uh, next slide, please. So this year, it's going to be required that um, all students have internet access uh, or online learn for the online learning this year. If you don't have internet access, um, please contact your school main office. In the spring, when uh, we closed down due to COVID in March and April, 
um, all of our families that we were able to make contact with that came to us or we were able to identify um, that didn't have internet access, we were able to provide hotspots too. We anticipate us being able to do the same. Um, so as you think about uh, what the school year may look like and over the next couple of weeks it'll probably start to solidify a little bit more um, think about where your kiddos will be in their learning if it's at in the evening and they're at home with you make sure you've got internet access there um, and if you don't please connect with the school office um, so that you can go ahead and and get connected with some internet resources not all activities will take place online but your child will need access to the internet in order to participate in class meetings. And we hope they're able to participate in those because that's when they get to see their friends and hang out and do some fun things together. Um, there'll be online instruction from the teacher. So there'll be live online instruction. And in addition, all of that live and online instruction will be recorded. So even if they, um, you're working during the day and the kids are at daycare and you come home that evening and you want to go through um, some um, instruction with them or if you want to be with them as they're going through the content, all those online instruction will be recorded and you'll need internet access to access those videos, those recorded videos. And then additionally assignments and activities that are associated with those assignments will be um, something that you'll need internet access to get to on Canvas, which is um, the platform that we're using this year. Not everything will be done online, so you'll still need the pencil and paper and crayons if you're in elementary level calculators, um, but the directions and the assignments in particular will be provided through um, their device and some many things will be done offline still. Next slide, please. If you want to take a screenshot of this with your phone or your computer, here are the phone numbers for all of our schools. If you um, need to reach out to one of the schools to check in with them about internet access and connectivity, these are the phone numbers that you'll be calling. If you get a voicemail, just explain um, who you are, your name, kind of like an attendance line, your name, your child's name, and the nature of your call. Uh, maybe that you listen to the family technology night and you're curious to hear a little bit about what internet access um, is available for the family. Okay, let's go ahead, next slide please. Student accounts. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and next slide please. Moments to talk a little bit about both the iPad and the Chromebook. And my hopes here is we are going to do a screen share on the iPad first. Great. So if this, at this time, I guess, if you have your child's iPad in front of you, this would be a great time to get that out just to kind of orient yourself to the device um, with it in hand. If you don't, that's no problem as well. You just may want to um, grab, get a hold of it sooner than later and kind of try some of these things out. One of the things that's difficult to share remotely, but uh, I'll do my best, is there is a single button on the glass front of the screen and that's called the home button. So when you click the home button, so right now I'm in Safari and I click the home button, it takes me back to this main screen. This main screen is full of little icons and those icons are called apps. If you've got an iPhone or any kind of smartphone, you're probably pretty used to apps. Um, there's certain apps that we allow on our student devices there is, um, we do not allow them to go into the app store. Instead, we've got, if I can find it, sorry, there is something called self-service. And there he is. So self-service is the equivalent of um, the app store for TTSD. Anything that's in self-service is something that can be downloaded by a student. So we don't allow things like Facebook or Snapchat, only devices that are in this self-service uh, store are uh, available for students. So I'm gonna click the home button again, if you're playing along at home, to get back to the main screen where I see a bunch of apps. 
And I wanna talk a little bit about what's down on the bottom, that lighter gray area that starts with the blue envelope, that's called the dock. So if you happen to call in for some help on the technical helpline, they might ask you to open something off the dock. That first icon is your email. The second one I'll show you a little later is the TTSD web filter. The third one that you see is Safari, which is a web browser. And then that fourth one is the calendar. You also could probably um, take a look at the settings. Let me, there's a gear icon. That is the one with the number two kind of up on the right. If you open up the settings icon, this is a place where you can go in and connect to your home Wi-Fi. This is where you can set your notifications. We also want to make sure kids stay up to date on their software update. So it looks like I have an update to perform here on the iPad. So I would click install now that uh, that blue um, linked button right there um, and it would automatically run those updates. So we do encourage you to help kids continue to update their devices um, at any given time. You might check with them once a week, once a month and just make sure they're up to date. You can also customize your uh, language and your keyboard. So one thing that I wanted to point out is language and region. You can set the language of your iPad to something other than English. They were set up automatically for English, but you can hop in there and you can change it to any other language if you have a home language different than English that might be more helpful for your student. So if it's helpful to have the iPad in Spanish, this is where you would go and set that, or Russian or Vietnamese. You can also have a different um, keyboard, and that's also set in general, where you can add a Spanish keyboard or a Vietnamese keyboard or some other type of keyboard that has different characters. So the settings is a place to go and check on your updates, um, set your language preferences, uh, those types of things. I think that's about it for iPad that I wanted to check, make sure you had. Yep. Um, oh, search one more thing. So the, <laughs> the kids have, that have had these iPads a while, they love to put their icons into nested folders. So, which means you won't be able to find anything. So what I'm doing is just showing you an example of how you can put things into folders and how easy it is to drag things around. Um, it is very difficult on any student iPad to find the app that you're looking for. So let me show you how to do a search. I'm gonna drag from the top and the middle, kind of by that FaceTime with the 14 on it, and I'm gonna drag down. And when I drag down, I get that search field. When I get to that search field, I can type in something like mail, if I'm looking for mail, or I can type in settings and then I can find the settings app. So that search button or that search feature, excuse me, is really helpful if you're trying to help a student track down an app. So again, you're dragging from the top middle down just a little bit, and then you get the search and you can type in that search field for whatever you might be looking for. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to the Chromebook. And we can open up to all sorts of questions later if, that, if you have anything specific to ask about those. Let me see if this will work for us. Perfect. So at this point, you are seeing a Chromebook interface on um, the screen. And it's telling me that I'm sharing my screen. I don't know. So as we log out, Let's see what, I bet I'm gonna lose you if I log out. When you turn on the Chromebook, it asks you to log in straight away. And that login is exactly the same as what we talked about before with the student accounts. So at high school, we have older kids, which means their graduation year is a little bit lower um, in number. So seniors this year graduate in 2021. So they would log in with a 21 and James M for Megan James at ttsdstudents.org and then they would put their TTSD password in. So that same account that they use to log into Canvas and everything else is the same device or same account that they use to log into the Chromebook. Down in the bottom right-hand corner by the Chromebook, and the Chromebooks really are just the Chrome browser. Um, that's all they are. So if you've got a device at home 
that your child, I saw that was one of the questions. Um, if you've got a device at home that you're using or your child prefers to use, that's totally fine if they can get their work done from home using that device. If they're in the hybrid program and metrics allow us to come back later in the school year, mid-year, they're gonna need to bring in their TTSD issued device. So if they've got a Chromebook at home, but they prefer their laptop, totally fine, they can use their laptop. Um, but when they come into school, they're gonna need to bring in their Chromebook. So make sure it's safe and charged and, and you know where that is. Kind of the equivalent on the Chromebook to setting up Wi-Fi and hotspot or to connect to internet is down under the clock. So I tapped on the clock in the bottom right hand corner if you happen to have a Chromebook with you. And this is where you can go and choose your wireless. You'll need to know your home Wi-Fi password. You can set some screen resolution, how bright it is, um, the sound, you can turn it up or down. And then this gear icon is where the settings are very equivalent to what we saw on the iPad. So you can update your, uh, your Chromebook. And again, we encourage students to always keep their Chromebooks up to date with the software. Um, you can check your Wi-Fi. You can change how the touchpad or trackpad on your Chromebook works in here. You can change your, oops, you can change your keyboard. It's where you can load another keyboard, a Spanish keyboard, a Vietnamese keyboard, something else for a different language if you are bilingual. Um, change your display. And then most importantly, down here under, maybe not most importantly, but down here under advanced, um, you can check, set your language input if you would like to change the, the language on your Chromebook. So if you would like to see it presented in Spanish, you can change your language to Spanish um, or any other language, and that will change the menus to that new language. It won't necessarily change the content on the website into a different language. All right, um, let's see. The other place that you might see that there's an update is up in this top right corner and those three dots. Looks like I might have lost that connection. So the three dots in the top right corner is the place that you might see a notification of an update on the Chromebook. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing that Chromebook and get us back to our slide deck if we could. Looks like we got some great questions coming in. I think we'll go ahead and, and work through those here shortly. Thank you for those. Again, if you've got questions, please put it in the Q&A button um, versus the chat and we'll work our way through those. Um, all right, next screen, please, or next slide. Might be a couple next slides. Those were the iPad, then the Chromebook. So we're gonna talk briefly about the web filter and then we'll talk a little bit about where to get help and then we'll open it up to some Q&A which should put us a little bit after 5.30. Um, next slide, please. So all of the devices that go home from Tiger Tualatin School District, whether that be an iPad or a Chromebook, are subject to the TTSD web filter um, even when they're not at school. So every day on an iPad, the students will need to go to this icon, this app, that it says TTSD web filter, and they'll need to log in with the account that we reviewed earlier. Remember Martin Diaz, he would log in with his 28DSM at ttsdstudents.org, and then his password, which was, I believe, capital M, one, two, three, four, five, six, and a little D, and that will get him in. He will not be able to use Canvas or anything else until he logs into that filter. So if you find that the student's having trouble, you know you're on your home internet and it's working okay, but they just can't get into Canvas, this is probably the first thing you're gonna wanna stop and check. Open up the TTSD web filter. It will tell you if you're successfully logged in and then you know that that's already um, successful. On a Chromebook, just by merely logging into the Chromebook, you log into the filter and so you will be filtered automatically. At this time, we have um, students in grades kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, there's a curfew that we've had in place for the last few years so that we made sure that they weren't doing anything like playing online games late in the evening and, or night and um, into the early morning. So we had a curfew put in place from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. 
we're in kind of different times now. And so since kids are home um, at this point um, and not coming into school and schedules are a little bit different than usual as well, um, it might be that we need to adapt this curfew so that parents as they get home from work might need to sit down and spend a little bit more time, um, potentially past 10 p.m., helping kids get to their grade or to their assignments and to their activities. So one of the things we've thought about doing, and I think I'll go ahead and open it up to that. Um, thanks, Gigi. If you could, using the chat functionality and not the Q&A, just because this is a technical request, if you think it would be beneficial to have that 10 p.m. curfew moved back, could you please put in a 11 p.m. or 12 p.m. for midnight, just so that we have um, a better understanding from a parent's perspective if you think that would be helpful to extend that. We'll be asking this each time, possibly in a little bit more formal approach next time. Got some earlier ones. and some requests not to. Thank you, very helpful. So it looks like there is some interest in pushing it back just a little bit. We'll be doing this um, informal survey <laughs> again um, a little bit later and I'll look to see for the different grades how we might be able to maybe let it go a little bit later for middle school or the upper elementary if need be, but maybe not for the younger kids. So um, appreciate the feedback. Um, we'll continue to ask these questions. Tonight's our first night doing our family technology nights. Um, we'll be capturing all the chat and going back through it to make sure that we get a good sense of um, what the feedback is from parents. So for right now, please know that there is a curfew in kids' grades, um, kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, and we will request um, a change to that here in the next couple of weeks before school starts and we'll keep you posted. It also tells the students, so if you're wondering, you might grab your student's iPad and at 11 o'clock, try to just jump on Canvas or go to google.com and it, it'll let you or it won't let you and it will tell you what that curfew is. So when in doubt, just try it after you think it might be um, enabled and it'll tell you if, it, if the curfew's on or not. All right, next slide please. Just a brief overview of the filter. Um, there are categories of content that we block that we're required to, um, and then there's some that are just um, makes good sense for educational environment. So just generically and kind of as a brief overview, social media and the society category, games, and inappropriate content um, is blocked. If you run into a situation during the school year where you're questioning whether that should be blocked or not, um, it's, it's a pretty clear, um, it's a fairly clear line between what's blocked and what's not blocked. If it's, uh, if it's something that's a picture and it's totally inappropriate, we block it. If it's something that could be used for instructional purposes, we try to um, let our teachers and our students uh, work through the appropriateness of the site and the content. But specifically, and this is questions that we get a lot, um, what sites are blocked? And Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat are all blocked on TTSD devices. Next slide, please. All right, last content or topic that we'll talk about tonight, and then we'll get into some Q&A, some question and answers. Um, next slide, please. Where to get help? So last year um, at this in the spring, we made a family help that ttsdschools.org site. It was actually called Parent Help at the time, but now it's familyhelp.ttsdschools.org. And it is a place that we're putting a lot of commonly asked questions and the answers. So how do I log into the filter? How do I access my teacher? Um, where can I get internet access? Those types of questions. I can't log in. I don't know my child's login information. Um, some of those, uh, more commonly asked questions, we try to put into the familyhelp.ttsdschools.org. It's called a knowledge base. Um, and so you can search for commonly asked questions there and it'll give you step-by-step -step guides on um, how to work through that. 
Secondly, we've got the technology help desk, which we opened up last spring and we'll continue to offer it again this fall and into the school year. And that phone number is there on the screen. It will be open from Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. once school starts. Um, we're training some staff right now to help with some of the um, first line of support. We'll be offering it in English and in Spanish. Um, until then, if you need to, or if it's after hours and you reach the, the 431-4051, then um, you can leave a voicemail. And somebody will take a look at that voicemail, will listen to it, and we will shoot to return um, that call the next day. The voicemail talks a little bit about what information to leave, like your child's name, what type of device you're on, what grade they're in, and then um, what kind of trouble you're running into. And then lastly, um, presentations such as this um, will eventually be put on a youtube.ttsdschools.org site. That site is not quite live yet. We'll have it live tomorrow. Um, and we'll take the recording from this presentation and we'll put it up there along with the community sessions, our board meetings. Um, there's been a variety of different video sessions that have been recorded and then posted up there. A lot of reopening school videos. So whether it's school level or um, community level meetings. Next slide, please. All right. I think what I'm going to do is I am going to invite our panelists to unmute, if I could, especially Jennifer. <laughs> um, and for those, I know we've been working through some questions. I don't know, hopefully our panelists have been looking at some of them. Um, looks like we've answered a few of them. Um, I'm going to start slowly working through those as Jennifer thinks of maybe the next question she'd like to offer up and maybe answer live for us and then we'll kind of go back and forth on those. So some questions, when will kindergartners pick up their, their iPads? That's coming in early September. Um, another kinder question. There is a pass, ah, thank you. There is a password on my child's iPad. It's it's most likely um, something your child set and or it's their student ID number. So that number that um, you can find on the students on your last report card, it's their student ID number, it's a six digit number, you might try that. If there's a passcode and the student doesn't remember it, that would be when you would wanna call the IT help desk, that 4051 extension and at least leave, at least leave a message and we can help you with that. Um, let's see. Jennifer, whenever you're ready, as I go through those, if you've got a question you want to toss out there. Let's see. Uh, question, uh, if a student deletes an app by mistake, where would they go to recover it? And they can reinstall it through that TTSD self-service app. So it was kind of that colorful, I call it looks like Simon, if you remember the game from the electronic game where you press the colors, um, it's a colored icon that's called self-service and they can download that um, from self-service. So Susan, there Kindergartners will be, yeah, go ahead, Jennifer. I was just gonna say there've been several questions about using a device other than their student issued device. And so I think we answered that earlier, but I'm not sure. So yeah, if they've got a home device that they that you would prefer they use or they are wanting to use, then they're welcome to use that. And that kind of goes along with the filter. So um, there was a question about, I can't find it right now, but something about um, how are we filtering? So we have a filter on student devices. Of course, we're not gonna have a filter on their home device. So that's just something to keep in mind. Yep, that's a good one. Um, Here's a question. Uh, do you need a printer at home? And it is not required that you have a printer at home. So there's many things and part of what we are focused on is to try to find every opportunity for the students to complete that online through the device that they're using or, and I forgot to show you this on your iPad, so there's some homework for you, um, or they can take a picture of whatever they've done on a piece of paper with pen and paper or crayons and paper, they can take a picture of it with the photo app on the iPad and they can send it in that way. So there is no reason for you necessarily to have an iPad, um, I'm sorry, a printer at home. Um, there might be occasion where um, 
printed materials might be available for your child depending on their need and that's something that we can arrange through the school. So there's also a question about um, live classes via Canvas or, or Google Meet and there may be some live sessions and it would only be if it's going to be um, a class meeting that would be with Google Meet. Some teachers might do some live meetings um, through the chat on Canvas, uh, but most live meetings will be either on Google Meet and then Canvas are the two things that'll be used most of the time. Um, several questions about parent view. So a couple things, if you, you could check your email account that you think the school district has there was uh about two weeks ago there was a series of emails on the borderline of too many that were sent out to parents who hadn't activated their parent view account there should be something in your email about an activation code that you can still go back to and use to activate your parent view account if you just cannot find that parent view activation account in your email or maybe your emails changed just reach out to your school um, and you can call the main number and they are totally ready and able to help you with that parent view activation account. So that would be great. There's also a question about um, logging in to Canvas. So, um, and also that there are some classes from last school year showing up on, on um, school devices. So all of that will be changed automatically. So the update for the current, uh, for fall classes will come before students arrive. And then as far as logging into Canvas uh, on the iPad, so there will be um, some things pushed out on the iPad automatically. Our Canvas will be pushed out automatically. Awesome. Um, all right, a uh, question from Alicia about would the login account work for students with two last names? Yes. So if my last name is Gutierrez Smith, just remove the hyphen and put it all together and then put your child's first initial at the end. So answer to that is yes, two first or the two last names will come together. Just remove the, um, just remove the hyphen. New students, if there's new students coming in that's not sixth grade, ninth grade or kindergarten, please contact your school. There will have a, we will have a device ready in the next week or so, depending on how recently you, um, how recently you signed up. And we'll have a device ready for you along with just kind of a getting started, a uh, couple of handouts, and then coming back to these presentations um, that'll be recorded might help you get a, a jump start. We'll also be providing some more details for students here as we get closer to school starting. All right, let's see. Susan, can you um, speak to the updates um, for iPads? So, you, if, yeah. So, both the Chromebooks and the iPads, we monitor what updates are available due to some of the compatibility issues between different apps that we use. So, if your device, your student's device, shows an update, you are free to walk through that and have them update their device. If you are looking for the newest, latest, greatest Chrome operating system, it may be that we are not able to offer that out because it might conflict with state testing software or some other software that we have. So we manage that um, to make sure that it doesn't have a negative impact on, on one of the other apps that we use. So if you see that there's an update for your iPad or for your Chromebook, please encourage your kids to update it. It will really help them and us to help keep that up to date. Um, so there's lots of Canvas questions, so. Yeah, I'm not sure if I was, if I said it very clearly. So the um, Canvas, the Canvas app will eventually be in self-service, but it isn't right now. And there will be a web app, which looks just like an app that will be automatically pushed out onto student iPads. Um, and so there's no need to uh, look for it right now. It's not available yet, but it will be very soon. Um, 
checking something real quick. And there's another question about will we will be will we be discussing Canvas and Florida Virtual and how to use it? And for students and families, there will be some um, how-to videos and in Canvas for each course that a student will be enrolled in, whether they're in elementary, middle, or high school, there will be a section about how to do the course. So how to navigate through a course, um, also how to contact their teacher. So that's on, that will be, all be included right within the modules that they'll have in Canvas. And we'll be making sure that there's some how-to videos some that are posted on our um, websites as well. A couple questions about, just a reminder that all of this is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube site. Um, so we'll get that's on the district homepage and that district homepage is uh, www.ttsdschools.org. So future events such as this and or access to recorded videos like this will be available through links on that main website. A um, couple questions about customizing curfew or some things that are available at home. You can customize your curfew on your own home internet device. So if you use Xfinity or Frontier, which is now like ZipFly, um, if you're not comfortable setting that up, you can call their customer service and you can, they have the technical capability of helping you identify that student iPad in the house and saying that they don't have access on your home Wi-Fi after say 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. if that's the rule in your house. So anything beyond what we offer is totally up to you for your home network and is possible. You're just going to want to connect with your service provider to help you with that. Let's see. So there's some questions about Canvas and parents on Wednesday at three o'clock and again, four o'clock, we'll be offering um, an overview kind of from a parent's perspective. So we'll talk a little bit more about parent view and we'll talk about that parent observer account to get into Canvas. So part of what's really helpful right now is if you don't have a parent view account, that's gonna be really important for the school year. So check your email, make sure you got yourself signed up with a parent view account because it is the same account you'll use to log into Canvas. And if you need any assistance with that, please give a, a call to your school. If your child's new and you need that student ID so you don't have a report card from last year, then you can also call your school. They'll ask you a couple of questions to verify your um, identification, and then they can provide you with that ID number so that you can um, help your child log in. And if you're new, there should be something that came with the device to help you and your child log in. So hopefully there was a handout with that. All right, um, I'm looking to see. So a couple questions. Yes, it's possible to connect an iPad to a keyboard. You'll need to have the right keyboard with the right connection. It's a lightning um, bolt connection. Um, and there is a way to connect to a larger monitor in a couple of different ways. Um, and I, I encourage you to just do some quick Googling and it will help you do screen share to a different device or to maybe a TV or whatever you're thinking about is available within your home. Um, let's see. Grades There's a on about, yeah, go ahead. Um, about just the title of, of the curriculum, it's Florida Virtual School. And so as far as the curriculum, the only thing that is um, that that would, be, that would need to be changed would be for our social studies, for our state history. Um, but all of the Florida virtual curriculum follows the common core standards that Oregon has adopted. So for example, all the math and all of the um, uh, English, English language arts all follow our common core that's um, Oregon based. So it's really just the history portion of it, the social studies, and instead of Florida content, we'll be using Oregon content for that. I just answered one question in the chat about Chromebooks and Canvas, and they will have another tab that opens up when they log in as a student that takes them straight to Canvas. 
Um, the link is there in the, the chat, or excuse me, the Q&A about where to go to log into Canvas. A lot of the kids did a digital citizenship class last year through Canvas at the high school. Um, so unless they're a ninth grader coming in, many of the kids have logged into Canvas at least once. Um, but I also posted the, the link and the kids will get a lot more information as we get closer. Um, additionally, uh, students are welcome to attend these family technology nights to get some questions out that they might have from last spring that we can help them with if that would be something that's appropriate for the age of your child in your home. All right. Seeing a lot of duplicates um, on updating the Chromebook. So how to update the Chromebook if there's an update available. Um, it will tell you. You can also go into settings and advanced and there's an update Chromebook in, um, in there. We'll have, that's in the knowledge base article as well. So if you go to familyhelp.ttsdschools.org, there's, there's an article in there that shows you some pictures as well of how to run those updates. Checking on time to make sure we aren't going to run over and we have a little bit of a break before we flip this over and we start at six o'clock in Spanish and have some interpretation in English. Um, we encourage you to attend that one if you would like or come back on Wednesday and we'll continue to do these again this week, next week, and then we'll continue them for sure the first week of school. Thank you again. I appreciate your time and your attention. Thank you for our interpreters. Thanks for our panelists to help answer the questions. Um, appreciate your time tonight and we will see you again soon.